I will start with the definition of phase and as you know and this is well known uh, if you have studied physical metallurgy um, and you have looked at phase diagrams then fa uh, I will uh, defin define phase diagram and how uh, what are the principles behind phase diagram these will be described in this course but you might have seen some phase diagrams um, whether it is a unary system or a binary system you might have seen some phase diagrams but what is a phase uh, this also we know it is a portion of matter that is chemically uniform, physically distinct and mechanically separable, right. This is something uh, a textbook definition, right. It is given that it is chemically uniform, physically distinct and mechanically separable, right. And but I can also define the phase as a subsystem of a composite system. If you remember when you define a composite system, uh, a composite system contains subsystems but the overall the composite system is isolated, um, it is isolated from the surroundings and but it has several subsystems and the subsystems are separated by walls and each subsystem is characterized by its own internal energy, volume and mole number of species, right. So basically you can think of phase as a subsystem, no. So again if I think of phase the way uh, 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 another definition of phase it is portion of a thermodynamic system. Right? Instead of telling portion of matter, I am telling that it is a portion of a thermodynamic system throughout which properties such as density, chemical composition, magnetization, heat capacity, these type of properties are uniform. So, it is a portion of a thermodynamic system. Instead of telling it is a portion of matter, I am talking of it as a portion of a thermodynamic system. So, as a result, what happens is with these ideas, see phase is a subsystem of a composite system or portion of a thermodynamic system you can immediately identify the previous idea, the concepts that we have been given uh, that uh, for of thermodynamic equilibrium that has been given in terms of subsystems of a composite system. So, it is a portion of a thermodynamic system means it is a subsystem throughout which properties such as density, chemical composition, magnetization, heat capacity, uh, polar electric polarization uh, or susceptibility these are uniform. So, these should have physically distinct physically and chemically distinct properties, right. So, a phase has its own composition for example, right. So, so, so that is exactly what I am talking about and if there are two phases say in, in a microstructure in a material you often see these internal structures under a microscope in this internal structures you different you see different types of contrast. Now, and so these contrasts are often identified as phase. Now, if you see when you see the contrast the main thing that distinguishes these two phases is the phase boundary or the interface between the phases. Right now, if you think of a uh, phase boundary, the phase boundary is drawn here. It's like a uh, 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 hypothetical phase boundary, mm, uh, then, uh, or you can think of it as a physical phase boundary. So, mm, right. So basically, if you look under a microscope uh, uh, in a in a in a system, say in an eutectic system, you will see that there is uh, these uh, two different phases, uh, like um, uh, cementite and ferrite and there is a distinct phase boundary that you can identify that separates these two phases right. So, this is one phase boundary I have shown schematically and if you look at that you have on one side alpha phase another side beta phase how are alpha how is alpha phase characterized it will have rho alpha which is uniform throughout it will have a uh, heat capacity okay which is again uniform throughout then it will have some magnetization say for example, it will have also mole fractions of different components that make up this phase like x1 alpha, x2 alpha and so on, right. It will also have its own energy, its own molar volume, etc, etc. Similarly, our lattice parameter, again uh, phase beta like it, it has its own density, uh, we can think of uh, and it has its own molar volume. So, therefore, it has its own unique lattice parameter and then you have phase beta say again phase beta has a unique density rho beta, it has a heat, unique heat capacity Cp beta, then unique magnetization say for example, iron chromium system the iron rich phase is magnetic while the chromium rich phase is not. So, as a result you have now again so the magnet, so the chromium rich phase um, when we identify a chromium rich phase one of the characteristics that we see is that it has no magnetization right. But, but if I look at the iron rich phase on the other hand, I look at that, I, I see that it is ferromagnetic and it has a spontaneous magnetization associated with it. 
Simi again, chromium rich phase has more chromium and the iron rich phase has more iron and throughout the phase the composition of iron will more or less be uniform. Again throughout the phase uh, uh, for beta phase x1, x2, uh, x1 beta, x2 beta this will be uniform right. So basically it will be chemically and physically uniform in terms of chemical and physical properties right and it is mechanically separable. Now, we, when we talk about phase transition, we, when we talk about phase transition, one of the common phase transitions that come into, uh, means that immediately come to our mind is like water evaporating, right, water boiling and it got to turn into water vapor or water freezing and becoming ice or ice melting and becoming water and so on, right. So basically this is the exactly the, or some phase alpha transforming. So basically the idea is some phase alpha is transforming to beta. And then when we look at phase transition, we also characterize something called a phase transition temperature. Phase transition temperature and pressure. Now when we talk about phase transition temperature and pressure, what we are telling is that there is a given pressure and given transition temperature at which alpha can transform to beta or vice versa beta can transform to alpha. In one case, uh, say for example for alpha to beta conversion, uh, alpha may require heat from outside uh, while for beta to alpha conversion, uh, heat can be released to the surroundings from the system, right. So, so, so this is a, so as you can see there is this arrow that is moving from alpha to beta, there is another arrow which is from beta to alpha and as you can see at the freeze transition temperature and pressure. this alpha beta conversion can go either way. So that means it is reversible, right. So there is a phase transition temperature and pressure. Now I told that whenever there is heat transfer or heat exchange between the system and the surroundings, if there is a heat exchange between the system and the surroundings, say some delta Q is added to the system or delta Q is removed from the system, you will always have a corresponding entropy exchange, right? There will be an entropy exchange, right? So this is called entropy transfer or entropy exchange between system and surroundings, right? Now think of an internal process like this phase phase transition, um, internal process such as a phase transition in, inside a system. Now, if this internal process is continuous, if this internal process is continuous or natural or irreversible then there will be also a non-zero entropy produced. So there is entropy exchange between the system and the surroundings due to heat transfer, but there is also entropy produced inside the system and there can be also entropy produced inside the surrounding if there is some process happening at the, in the surrounding. But the entropy produced, so if I am considering only an internal process which is happening only inside the system, then entropy produced is called DSIR or DSP. That means this P means entropy is produced, right? Entropy production or entropy that is happening due to this irreversibility. Irreversibility, again, irreversibility is associated with any natural or spontaneous process. So, any natural or spontaneous process will produce some entropy. So, there will be some entropy that is coming from the exchange uh, between system and surroundings. It is like an exchange of thermal matter. If you remember, it is like an exchange of thermal matter. And that exchange of thermal matter is due to heat transfer. And um, if there is this exchange of thermal matter, where when there is a temperature gradient, for example, uh, that part, that that part is, you will see that that part can always happen if there is a heat transfer. Whether it's a re re reversible process or irre irreversible process, that is immaterial. However, when the process is irreversible, then there will be also a non-zero entropy produced. This is the most important part. So basically, if I go further, so if I if I describe further, so this DSIR will be equal to zero when the process is reversible, right? When the process is reversible. Now, first law when we talk about, if I think of these quantities like dV, right? There is a dV or dN as exchange quantities like exchange between the system and the surroundings. For example, dVe is the change in volume of the system or volume exchange between the system and the surroundings. Again, dNe is basically 
nothing but change in amount of component inside the system or matter exchange between system and surroundings this can happen when the system is open in the dve it can happen when, even when the system is closed right you can have mechanical energy transfer or energy transfer when the system is closed but dne or matter transfer between the system and the surrounding can only happen when the system is open or we are considering a subsystem which is separated by an uh, by a permeable membrane which is permeable to the exchange of matter or exchange of species right so now if i look at this internal process that is happening inside the system and i am look and i derive the thermodynamic the first law uh, it is the combined um, first law second law then what i'll write i'll write t dse minus p dve plus mu dne which is nothing but for a reversible process this is same as tds that is change in entropy minus p dv that is change in volume and there is multiplied by pressure and uh, as you remember that u as a function of s v n you have expanded and you have written this coefficient so d equal to t d s minus p d v plus mu d n right so this is signifying a reversible process however and for reversible process you have only exchange terms but for an irreversible or a natural or spontaneous process we have told that there is a d s i r d s i r which is greater than zero right so it is like a d s i r in this case if the it is if it's an irreversible process is happening inside the system then this ir system has to be greater than zero right if it is happening in the surrounding then ds ir surrounding also has to be greater than zero right wherever there is an irreversible or spontaneous or natural process natural or spontaneous natural process or spontaneous process or an irreversible process they are all same right if there is a natural process the natural process there is a natural reaction to the process and or there is a sp and the process will happen spontaneously or irreversibly right so dsir system in that case will be greater than zero now if you see if i now rewrite the first law taking into account this irreversibility component then ds exchange that is the amount of entropy exchange between the system and the surrounding is nothing but ds of the system in entropy of the system overall dsis means this is like a ds system so basically what i am trying to say here is ds system which is equal to ds is nothing but ds exchange plus ds ir right so if that is so so ds exchange is nothing but ds um ds minus ds ir right ds minus ds ir right so that's what i am written ds equal change now becomes equal to ds minus ds now if that is so if that is so then we can write du in the case of an irreversible process happening inside the system equal to tds minus pdv plus mu dn and ds exchange is ds exchange term is what ds total change in entropy minus the irreversible part right so ds minus tds i right so that is the idea and this is something that has been used this tds i has been used in uh, by hiller right in his phase diagrams phase transformations book recently by long king chen in his uh, book on thermodynamic equilibrium and stability of materials it is to basically understand and also understand and also quantitatively explain the contribute or quantitatively calculate the contribution of the entropy that is produced in the system when there is an irreversible process right so you have this equation now whether the process is reversible or irreversible does not matter this equation tells you the change in internal energy of the system equals to tds that is the change in entropy times the uh, temperature by the way temperature and entropy are conjugate variables then minus pdv this is the mechanical work done uh, the reversible mechanical work done and then is mu dn by the way there is this tds i r now this entropy produced can be because of exchange irreversible exchange of mole number can be because of some irreversible exchange of pressure it can happen for various reasons right so but there is this t minus tds i r and that is because of the entropy that is produced in the system if the process is irreversible now this tds i r we often write as tds ir can also be written as uh, as shown in hillard's book 
or long king change book that it can also be written as d d theta where d where d is the amount of dissipation of internal energy right or this is basically driving force with this amount of dissipation of again as i told you previously entropy basically measures the Disp the, the, the dissipation of the internal energy right so so basically the amount of dissipation of internal energy or you can think of this as a driving force for a spontaneous or a natural or an irreversible process right for example heat flow from hot body to a cold body is a spontaneous or natural or irreversible process right it 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 it, ha it has to be a natural process uh, because it does not require any engine right it does not require any external work to be done or stuff so you have a hot body you have a cold body you put them together heat will flow spontaneously from a hot body to a cold body unless there is equilibrium established right so now zeta what is this zeta so instead of tdsir i am representing by td dd zeta um in those books in the in the books they use zi but i am using zeta here so zeta is the extent of the process the extent of the process means it is zeta is some sort of an internal process variable or an order parameter you can you can think of it as an order parameter on an internal process variable this basically tells the say basically if i tell it's the extent or progress of the process say i i am tracking the progress of process so at the start of process zeta is equal to 0 at the start of process zeta is equal to 0 now as i go to the end my zeta increases and as it and at the end of the process once the process is completed then zeta goes to becomes one right so that is how we can define zeta which is an order parameter on it, which quantifies the extent of the process or it is an internal process variable which tracks the progress of a spontaneous process now remember the driving force is equal to zero for a reversible process there is no driving force alpha can transform to beta beta can transform to alpha when it is a reversible process right in if it's a reversible phase transition alpha can transform to beta beta can transform to alpha for example at one bar pressure and 0 degree celsius like 273 kelvin ice to water transformation is a reversible process because ice can transform to water water can transform to ice right it's a reversible process however d becomes greater than 0 for an irreversible or spontaneous process and as i told you t d s i r as written as d d c and d is given as now this d variable there is a driving force or the extent of dissipation is given by or amount of dissipation of internal energy uh, basically which produces this irreversibility is given by minus del u del z uh, zeta and at constant entropy volume and molar right it's called uh, minus del u del z so as i was telling you this is zeta is like an order parameter in a phase transition process now zeta equal to 0 in the uh, so basically if i tell zeta equal to 0 that is the parent phase now if zero and if zeta lies between zero and one it's a mixture of parent phase and product phase for example there is some some phase transition that is happening from a cubic phase to a tetragonal phase then when i'm talking about cubic phase cubic phase is the parent phase where zeta equal to zero now there is a value of zeta between zero and one which basically quantify or which basically signifies a mixture of the parent phase and product phase and zeta equal to one is basically the product zeta equal to 1 is a process right so now if we have that if we know this dsir and minus d dsir now dsir is nothing but d by t d zeta right according to this definition dsir is nothing by but d by t d zeta now d by t d zeta right so according to this definition it follows that dsir equals to d by t d zeta and now if i integrate from the initial state to a final state remember this is another very important point that i want to tell you if i have two points see the advantage of using state functions is that we are only interested in the two states what is the path followed whether the path is irreversible or reversible it does not really matter right as long as i know the two states i know the properties of these two states in terms of entropy change or internal energy change i can quantify the amount of Um, uh, entropy produced or amount of some quantity consumed and stuff right we require for state functions we only require the final and the initial states we don't require to know how this initial to final state transition has happened 
whether through a reversible path or through a reversible path, right? So we don't require to know. Now, if you see, when I am integrating, this is like d by t d zeta. Means I instead of writing initial to final d s i r, I can also do a d by t d zeta. That d zeta zeta signifies the extent or pro, the progress of process. Or zeta is an internal process variable, or it's like an order parameter. When there is when cubic and tetragonal phases are coexisting, then the order parameter is between zero and one. When it completely becomes the product phase, that is the tetragonal phase, then zeta becomes equal to one. Otherwise, zeta equal to zero. Right. So that's that's how you can define a cubic to tetragonal phase transition. It means a lattice, a solid lattice, a solid is transformed from cubic phase. Cubic phase means it has a cubic crystal structure. Then, at a certain critical temperature, for example. It uh, changes from cubic crystal structure to a um, to a um, tetragonal crystal structure. It can be because of certain temperature. It can be also because of some app like application of certain strain that you get such a uh, transformation. Again, you can think of liquid to solid transformation the same way, or uh, when it is an irreversible process. For example, if I take up um, some ice in water and then I take it uh, to room temperature from zero uh, zero degree Celsius. From zero degree Celsius, I take it to room temperature. Then that ice that that is there, or uh, the ice cubes that we have put inside water, these ice cubes will start melting, right? So they will start melting, and they will melt irreversibly, and they will produce water. So I am at room temperature, say twenty-five degree Celsius, and I have a bucket full of ice, and this ice bucket ultimately, once we see, we will see that the ice bucket has con converted to water completely. All the ice in the bucket have converted to water, right? It has melted to water. So that's an irreversible process. Now, how much is the amount of irreversibility? This type of definition will help us quantify, right? So again, if uh, so, now think of an isolated system. If I have an isolated system, isolated system means no way there is any exchange of energy. Means you, it does not allow exchange of energy. It does not allow exchange of volume. It does not allow exchange of um, exchange of Uh, matter, right? Isolated system does not allow any exchange whatsoever. Now, in such cases, d can be written as t del s del zeta, right? It can anyway be written as t del s del zeta. Now, if you see here, so for such a process for an isolated system, d can be zero if the initial state inside the isolated system is at equilibrium. If the initial state is at equilibrium, then d is equal to zero. That means there is no driving force for the for any spontaneous process because you are already in the equilibrium state. However, if you are away from the equilibrium state, that means you have an initial non-equilibrium state, then d has to be greater than c. Right. So for a closed system, that is system that is in contact with say a thermal and mechanical reservoir, for example. Uh, now, if it is thermal and mechanical reservoir, we know from the Lagrange transform that instead of using this potential U, instead of using U as V n, we will write try to use G or Gibbs free energy as a function of temperature, pressure, and mole number. So S and T are conjugate, so S will be replaced by T, S is replaced by T, and V is replaced by P, and N remains N. So this is now. So we use G T P. Now, if you see. What is DSIR? DSIR is DS minus DS exchange, right? Now, DS exchange is nothing but del Q P by T. Again, a mechanical reservoir, so del Q P by T and D U and del Q P is nothing but D U plus P D V, right? D U plus P D V, which is nothing but so the heat transfer at constant pressure is nothing but change in enthalpy. So you can con um, configure it as change in enthalpy since D P equal to zero, right? Now. So this can be written as ds minus del delta Qp by t or ds minus del dh by t, and this is which is nothing but if I take uh, this if I simplify this further, I can write t comes here so t ds minus dh by t. But if you see g is nothing but h minus ds, right? Again from the Legendre transform, g is h minus ds. So dg goes dh minus t ds minus dt t, but this is In contact with the thermal reservoir, so this is a fixed temperature. So dt equal to zero. So dg goes to dh minus tds. If you see, tds minus dh is nothing but minus dg. So ds ir is nothing but minus dg by t, which is equal to d del zeta 
d d d zeta by t right zeta is again the uh, internal process variable so driving force is negative derivative or partial derivative of the uh, gives free energy with respect to the internal process variable at fixed temperature pressure and moment right so so and the delta g that is the the, the, the free energy that the, the change in free energy for this entire process for this entire spontaneous process is nothing but a negative of the t into delta s right so minus t delta s ir is nothing but that is the amount of extent of dissipation right extent of dissipation of internal energy is nothing but delta s right minus t delta s ir in this equation in the equation that i showed here so if you see this entire term is nothing but in this case in the closed system which is in contact with the mechanical and thermal reservoir it is nothing but delta s that is not change in the gives free energy right now we take an example a quick example in fact i have given this as one of the assignments and i have also explained there i think that most of you have done it correctly so if you see you have means a part of the problem has been given as an assignment um uh, right now i will just discuss this problem in the light of this new new stuff that you learned that delta h fusion because to and as you know delta h fusion and delta h melting are synonymous right and delta and opposite of delta h crystallization or delta h solidification right so delta so the enthalpy change due to solidification is minus of the enthalpy change due to fusion or melting right melting or fusion of the same process right so 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 it is that so if you think of the definition of delta h fusion or delta h melting that is the amount of heat absorbed right uh, a solid has to absorb this amount of heat right and uh, one mole of solid abs absorbs this amount of heat that is delta h fusion that is nothing but the latent heat so um, uh, latent heat and it converts to to convert to one mole of liquid at one bar pressure so delta h fusion is given again at the transition temperature remember when i am talking about when i am signifying when i am telling that delta h fusion or delta h melting that is the latent heat of melting or latent heat of fusion and that is always specified at the given temperature that given temperature is in general the transition temperature and one bar pressure right and as i told you delta h crystallization this is basically when a uh, liquid is transformed to solid now when a liquid transforms to solid it releases it to the surrounding right it releases it to the surrounding so it is the amount of heat released from the system to the surrounding when one mole of liquid solidifies or crystallizes to form one mole of you know, so one mole of liquid solidifies to form one mole of solid at one bar pressure let us call it one bar pressure sometimes we do use one atmosphere pressure but let's call it one bar pressure right so in this case i am thinking of ice to water conversion now ice to water conversion the 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 transition temperature or the temperature of the reversible process is 0 degrees celsius and 1 bar pressure right 1 bar pressure means 10 to the power 5 pascal pressure and this is an ice so at this temperature and pressure ice to water transformation or transition is reversible right ice can go to water water can means uh, it can at 0 degrees celsius and 1 bar pressure water can exist in the solid state as well as in the liquid state right both are in both are in equilibrium right ice and water are in equilibrium right um, and this when ice and water are, that means their free energies are equal right ice and water free energies are equal now in such a case ice can transform to water or water can transform to ice there is no 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 spontaneity means there is no spontaneous transformation from ice to water or water to ice however if i raise the temperature above 0 degree ice will melt to water spontaneously if i lower the temperature below 0 degree water will transform to ice irreversibly right so that is the problem so how much is that is what we will quantify right so in this uh, small example so as you know again this is the combined first second law when we are talking about some process which can be a natural process or a reversible process taking place in the system and again we know all this math and we quickly go through this and what i am trying to say that at constant pressure dp equal to 0 and then dh is du plus pdv which you know so we can write dh equals to tds right from here dh equals to tds plus mu dn minus right tds plus mu dn because du plus pdv is dh right dh equals to ds plus mu dn what i have done is i have taken this here so this becomes du plus pdv and that is equal to dh 
right so once we have done that now we are telling that and the uh, melting point right or melting point or freezing point is 0 degree celsius right that that is the critical temperature right the the the, 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 the phase transition temperature so this is the phase transition so 0 degree celsius is the phase transition temperature from solid to liquid or liquid to solid associated with so phase is 0 degree celsius at 1 bar pressure remember at 0 degree celsius and 1 bar pressure iced water conversion or water to uh, ice conversion is are both possible because ice and water are in equilibrium and the process is a reversible process now we also define the molar volume of ice which is 19.66 centimeter cube per mole it is per mole and of water is 18.0 to centimeter cube per mole. Note that the molar volume of water is smaller than that of ice. What does that mean? What is the molecular weight of water? Molecular weight is 18.02 grams per mole. So, if that is so, then rho is equals to 18.02 grams per mole by now if I think of rho water if I think of rho water it is 18.02 centimeter cube per mole which is equals to 1 gram per cubic centimeter right so density of water is 1 gram per uh, cubic centimeter so rho water so basically rho is equals to m by vm for any material right now for ice what it will be ice and water they have the same composition right chemical composition is water h2o right which has a uh, uh, molecular weight of 18.02 grams per uh, uh, molecule right so if you have that then rho ice equals to this is here it will be vm is 19.66 right and here it will be 18.02 so this comes out to be I think approximately 0.916 say this is gram per cc or cubic centimeter so gram per centimeter as you can see ice at this uh, 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 so at 273k and 1 bar that is 273k means 0 degree celsius right 0 degree celsius is nothing but 273k and at this temperature and at this pressure the dense uh, ice is lighter than water right now amount of heat released per mole of water per mole so amount of heat released when water solidifies to ice per mole is given by delta h crystallization which is negative of delta h fusion which is given as say negative of delta h fusion and delta h fusion is 6006 say let us assume delta h fusion equals 6006 joules per mole so Delta H crystallization is nothing but minus 6600. Now, delta H is delta U plus P dV. Now, delta U plus P delta V is nothing but QP. And QP is the heat transfer at constant pressure, right? Heat input the system at constant pressure, which is nothing but equal to T delta X, right? Now, the entropy released. Now, if you think of entropy released, because see, uh, Water transforming to ice means heat is released to the surrounding, so there is an entropy released to the surrounding, and that amount of entropy released will be minus 6006 by 273. So, first of all, the heat released is minus 6006 joules per Kelvin, right? It is minus 6006 joules per Kelvin, and the entropy released is basically coming from this equation because minus Tm delta C, right? Which is basically given by minus 22 joules per Kelvin. Now, if that is so if there is an entropy released right so basically there is an ex entropy exchange so inside the system entropy gets reduced right entropy gets reduced when water converts to ice right there is this delta ic is minus 22 right delta ic 
is minus 20. That means in the surrounding, because it is released, there is a negative of delta S C that is basically. So, because the delta S C system plus delta S C surrounding should go to 0, right? Delta S C system plus delta S C surrounding should go to 0. So, delta S surrounding is nothing but minus delta S C which is 22 joules per Kelvin. It is also understandable because there is heat released to the surrounding and as a result the entropy, the entropy of the, the exchange, the, 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 the amount of entropy that will go up in the surrounding will be like it will be the same as the entropy that is transferred to uh, that is the entropy that is changed in the system right this is due to the heat transfer right of uh, 6006 uh, joules per uh, joules and that's minus 6000 the 6006 joules is the amount of heat that is released by one mole of water when it converts to ice right now 6006 by 2273 is the delta ic but it is negative right it is minus tm delta ic because in Entropy is released from the system so uh, to the surrounding. So the entropy of the surrounding will go up and that will go up exactly by the same amount, so which is 22. So the delta S surrounding and delta S system they add up to C. So delta S is delta S system, which is nothing but delta S C, which is minus 22 uh, joules per Kelvin, and this plus 22 joules per Kelvin. Again, remember this is all calculated per mole, right? We have taken one mole of ice and I am looking at 1 mole of ice converted to water or 1 mole of water converted to ice. Here we are looking at 1 mole of water converted to ice. Now if you see you have delta SC which is minus 22, you have delta SIR which is delta S minus delta SC which has to be C. So for a reversible process the, the irreversible the, the, the irreversible component of entropy or the entropy produced has to be C. Right? And so you have you have now this delta S total which is delta S system plus delta S surrounding which is basically 22 at plus 22 in uh, inside the surrounding right inside surrounding it is plus 22 so I should have written this way minus 22 plus 22 which is equal to 0. So, delta S total, that is the total entropy change is 0. See, for a reversible process, entropy is conserved, right? The process is reversible, right? There is no change in total entropy, right? If a process is reverse, irreversible, there will be a positive change in entropy. But if the process is reversible, then delta S total, that is the system surroundings, or that is, or this is also called delta S universe. Universe includes system and surrounding which is equal to C, right? Now, I have been, uh, means we have been asked to calculate the change in enthalpy or the difference in enthalpy between water and ice at 273K and 1 bar pressure. So, del water to ice is basically nothing but, see delta H, so when I write delta H water to ice, water transformed to ice, what I, what I mean is it is H ice minus H water. Again this H means I can use small, small H or even if I tell one mole then small H or capital H does not matter. So, this is, it is basically the enthalpy per mole. So, is H ice minus H water, right? So, basically delta H fusion will be H water minus H ice. So, delta H water minus delta H ice, sorry, H water minus H ice that is basically is nothing but delta H fusion. Ice to what right so ice has to absorb it so it is minus of the delta h oscillation so which is equal to delta h fusion which is nothing but 6006 joules now if you look at the molar volume then you can also estimate u water minus u ice because h water minus h ice is nothing but u water plus pv p into molar volume of water because i am talking about one one mole of uh, water 
and converted to one mole of ice, and this is U ice plus PVM of ice, which is equal to 6006 joules. Now we can calculate PVM water minus PVM ice. P is given. P is basically one bar, which is like think about one. It can be 10 to the power 5. I mean, sometimes you may use. You can also use 10 to the power 5 Pascal or 10132.5 Pascal, and then you have this difference 19.6698.02, and this is. Uh, centimeter cube per mole, so you can convert into meter cubes, which is 10, uh, you have to multiply by uh, 1 meter is 100 centimeters, so you have to multiply by 10 to the power minus 6. So, what you get, the contribution that you get, if you see, this is these are both condensed phases, phases. See, there is no gaseous phase. So, the PV work is really, really small compared to the, the enthalpy of fusion. See, the enthalpy of fusion or heat of fusion is 6006, whereas this PV work the difference in the, the PV in water and ice for this pressure one bar pressure is only 0 0.166. So, 6006 plus 0 0.166 is basically this is a like like the numbers in thousands and it is like numbers in tens and so 6006 plus 0 0.166 is actually 6006.166 but that 0 0.166 is negligible compared to this number right. So, we can take same that means PV work I can neglect right. Now, if that is so Another thing that we are talking about is water minus S i. So, S water minus S i is basically delta S. So, it is basically delta S i s to water. Obviously, again common sense tells us that ice which is solid will have lower entropy than that of water, right. Water which is liquid which will have more, right, which will have more mobile atoms and uh, which can slide past one another, which can slide uh, means uh, be slightly more disordered than uh, solid. In solid it is very closely packed compared to water. Then you can immediately see that S water minus S ice is nothing but the amount of entropy that was produced in the system that, 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 that was changed the system during this reversible process. We should not use the word produced that the amount of entropy that was required for this, this transformation to take place was 22 joules per Kelvin, right? 22 joules per Kelvin was uh, was per, uh, 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 was the amount of entropy that uh, happens to exchange, and that is 22 plus 22 happens as uh, surrounding, and plus uh, minus 22 happens in the system. But in this case, this is ice to water, right? So basically, ice to water means ice will require heat. So heat is coming inside the system. If it is coming inside the system, there is a change. There is also thermal metal, thermal matter coming inside the system. That means the entropy is increasing, right? Although there is no irreversibility, but the entropy is increasing, and the entropy difference is nothing but plus 22, right? It is plus 22 joules per Kelvin inside the system. Now, think of one interesting case. Now, see, this is basically I am looking at. So, if you look at, I am actually developing thermodynamics for a unary system. Unary means one component system. Water is a single component, right? We are not talking about hydrogen and oxygen because we are not caring about that reaction of hydrogen and oxygen coming to form water. We are just looking at phase transitions in water, and water is a single component. As a result, a single component system, we are looking at phase equilibrium in a single component system. And the equilibrium that we are specifically looking at is the equilibrium, uh, solid liquid equilibrium, that is coexistence of ice and water at 273 Kelvin and 1 bar. Now, let us consider irreversibility. That means we will consider the temperature at which the process of converting to water from water to ice or ice to water becomes irreversible. Now, if that is so, if we consider 298 Kelvin and 1 bar, 1 mole of ice in this case is irreversibly melting to 1 mole of water. Right, one mole of ice is irreversibly melting to one mole of water. Now think of enthalpy difference and entropy difference. That is H water minus H ice or um, and S water minus S ice basically to be the same as that of 273 Kelvin. Right, that is the that is the same as that of so at 298 Kelvin. We are telling that the change is it is very insensitive. That H water minus H ice or S water minus S ice the change in that with respect to temperature is very very small right that the, 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 the basically the cp contribution is small is what we are talking about right so the enthalpy difference and entropy difference do not change they are same as that at 2, 273 kelvin and 1 bar pressure at 298 kelvin and 1 bar pressure it is the delta is melting 
right per mole and delta s melting per mole at 273 kelvin and 1 bar pressure are the same and that is equal to 22 joules per kelvin right you require the system requires 22 joules per kelvin for this conversion or this transition to take place however note this that at 25 degrees celsius this is an irreversible transformation now when ice melts heat is absorbed by the system from the surroundings now so in the surrounding the 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 the, the, there is that from the surrounding so if there is a negative heat input to the surrounding right heat is getting absorbed right so it is coming from the surrounding so which is basically now surrounding as is at what temperature 298 kelvin how much of it is required that is uh, enthalpy is required it is 6006 right so it it so when when ice melts it requires 6006 joules right for mole so uh, in one mole it requires 6006 joules now minus 6006 by 298 298 is the temperature of the surrounding right it is because 298 is the temperature of the system so it is the temp uh, it, it is the temperature of the surrounding also right so 290 because system and surrounding should have the same temperature at thermal equilibrium so then delta s surrounding is minus 20.15 in this case because it is transferred from the surrounding to the system right so that entropy or thermal matter of the surrounding goes down right but it goes down by minus 20.15 but the amount of it that the entropy exchange that is required for ice melting to water is basically plus 20.15 joules per kelvin, right? So the entropy exchange during ice melting to water, right? Ice melting to water. So basically, you are in, uh, producing entropy, and the amount of entropy that is uh, not producing, you are, you there is a change in entropy, but the change in entropy is positive. Again don't call it entropy so th this is something that i am sorry for means i have told entropy produced we should not call entropy produced it is the entropy that is exchanged or the entropy that is basically exchanged or transferred between the system and surrounding so this is delta s e or you can call it delta s transfer means the amount of entropy that is we transfer to the system for this ice melting to water at 298 kelvin and one bar pressure is 20.15 joules per kelvin now delta s total is basically delta s system but delta s system remember has something called delta s e that is the amount of entropy that has is to be transferred for ice melting to water and that amount of entropy that is exchanged between the system and the surrounding because delta s surrounding is nothing but delta s uh, delta s surrounding and delta s e inside the system the, uh, right basically they have to add up to zero right so if it is minus 20.15 then there will be plus 20.15 right this is plus plus 20.15 but you see delta s system is slightly more than delta s e because delta s system is given as 22 right it is 22 joules per kelvin right it was given as the the the, the entropy difference between water and ice is at 298 Kelvin is 22 joules per Kelvin. So 22 joules per Kelvin is, a, is delta S system, but the entropy that is exchanged is only 20 plus 20.15. As you can see here, this is minus 20.15. So the exact amount with the opposite sign will be transferred to the system, which is minus 20.15. The minus of minus 20.15 is plus 20.15 that will be transferred to the system. But there is a entropy difference which is 22, 22 so if you see there is the delta S system is 22 which includes this part plus the irreversible part and for the surrounding there is no irreversible part right the process is happening inside the system right the irreversible process is happening inside the system so this is negative 20.15 this is plus 22.0 so you get a plus 1.85 joules per kelvin as you can see it is a spontaneous it is indeed a spontaneous process because the delta s total or delta s universe is positive right it is indeed a spontaneous process and the delta s irreversible right the delta s irreversible that is the amount of entropy produced inside the system is 1.85 joules per kelvin right so basically as i told you that delta s system is nothing but it is 22 which is 20.15 plus delta s i r and delta s i r is 1.85 and if you add them basically you get 22 right so basically 22 is 20.15 plus 1.85 and 1.85 that means is the amount of entropy that is produced in the system during this spontaneous transformation
from i is to 1 right now if you think of delta g as i told you this is nothing but the minus t delta s i r which is basically minus 551.3 joules right this is the chemical energy which is change this is the amount of chemical energy or the this free energy change or this minus 551.3 right 298 minus 298 into 1.85 is nothing but delta g and this is the chemical energy that is changed to thermal energy right that is converted to thermal energy right so we will discuss further in the next lecture we will discuss further about the unary system the equilibrium in unary system and we will discuss uh, how to represent this using a phase diagram and the phase boundary and we will also discuss the concept of uh, the, 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 there is something called a phase rule to quantify these transformations. So, we will discuss all of this in the next lecture.